Very good evening to you all. Welcome to our revival service. May God bless you for joining us. Amen. Also want to appreciate those joining us online. May God bless you for doing so. We are the Apostolic Faith Church located at 13 Penny Road. DA53 EP is our postcode. We'd like to have you around if you live close by and God will surely bless you. Amen. Uh, we want to appreciate those that started for us the choir sang uh, Bright in the Corner Where You Are by C.H. Gabriel. Then we had the duet uh, from Sister Faith and Sister Ola Bisi, Yes, I Know by Anna W. Waterman. Now it's our turn to sing from Collected Gospel Songs. 674 is the first song. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Definitely there isn't. Christ is our best friend. Brother Michael Ola will lead us through this song and the others that follow.
Take another number, 679. 679 from the CGS. I have a message Amen. from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May that message be a blessing to us today. Amen. We'll sing the three verses after the tune. Let's take one chorus from the book of Spoke, 614, for the instrumentalist, 614, Spoke 614, magnify the Lord with me. When we sing it to the end, the second time, instead of magnify, we'll sing glorify the Lord with me. So the first time we sing it as it is, the second time whenever we see magnify, we put glorified. I will be three, seven, eight in the CGS book. Three, seven, eight. Once my eyes were blind to the beauty of the Lord. Thank God our eyes are now open Amen. to the glory of his name. Amen. We'll sing uh, verses one and two sitting down. And the third verse, we'll stand up to sing it after which we will remain standing and we shall be led in prayer. Three, seven, eight.
As we remain standing, looking up to God, we call upon Brother David Ojo to pray for us. Oh, gracious Father, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we've come again tonight. We've come for the evening dose. You fed us this morning. Father, we give you all glory, all honor. We've come again this evening. We want to receive our new from thee. When the message comes, we know it's just for us. I yes. want to be able to personalize the message. Yes. We want the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened. Amen. Through the preacher this evening, you want, you want miracles. Amen. We want you to speak through them today. Amen. We want that word to talk to our hearts. Amen. We don't want to be hearers only. We want to be doers of the word. Amen. Through the testimony service, we commit to your hands. Amen. All songs, we commit to your hands. Amen. Take full control. Amen. We want to leave here renewed. Amen. We want to leave here revived. Amen. Answer our prayers, oh God. Amen. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome to this uh, evening service. May the Lord bless all of us. Amen. Uh, just a few reminders about um, weeknight services. We will have uh, Tuesday Medway Bible study at 7.30 p.m. And then Wednesday we meet here at 7.30 p.m. for uh, Bible study. As I said in the morning, we are uh, studying from 1 Samuel chapters 28 to 31. And the title is Living According to God's Design. And then on Friday, we meet again for prayer meeting at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Saturday, uh, youth ladies event, grow into his glory from 11 in the morning. And then next Sunday, should Jesus tarry, we have Sunday school for all ages at 10, devotional service at um, quarter past 11. And then revival and evangelistic service will be at 5 in the evening. We will continue our service with the first special, which is a choir song, Constantly Abiding, by Mrs. Will I. Murphy. After that uh, choir song, it will be time for two many testimonies. I think as many as would want to testify, We'll allow them, but uh, it's two minutes per person. Uh, those that are singing for us from the choir will start us, and then we'll continue. After the testimonies, we'll have the last special, which is a solo, So May You, by James Rowe, uh, sung to us by Sister Michelle. Now, the choir members, before we have the last special, who will join the congregation. God bless you.
thank God for his mercies. I thank God for his kindness. I thank God for giving me the opportunity to be born in the gospel. I thank God that by God's grace, I'm sure I was born into the blood of Jesus. And I have been taught by, you know, the word since I was young. And I'm so grateful to God that I was able to take it because I know that so many of the people that we were born in the church, that we grew up in the church together, and they're not here. I'm not saying they're not Christians, but I'm just grateful that that heritage that God gave to me, I decided to take it, and God has been keeping me. Like this song said, constantly abiding, Jesus has been abiding with me. I'm grateful that he saved my soul, he sanctified me, and he baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. And I can, I can proudly say that God has been with me. It has not been easy. Like this song says that the trials of life may surround us like a cloud. But I have that peace of Jesus in my heart. I'm so grateful that Jesus never, never leaves me. He has been so kind. I remember years ago, I can't even remember how many years, when my husband left. And I remember me in my bedroom crying my eyes out. And I was... I was just so shattered, and I was like, where do I start from? What do I do? Where do I go? Who is going to deliver me? And I heard that voice. It said, I will never leave you nor forsake Amen. you. That is what I've been hanging on to, and he has been so faithful. Amen. How he does it, I don't know. How he pays my bills, I don't know. How he gives me the strength. Michael was four, and now he's 19, and God has been so good. When I look at my life, I just say, God, you have been faithful. Amen. I remember one time I was driving and I was tired. I think, oh God, my salary is not enough. And they put a freeze into government that you can't get promotion. I remember where I was in that, at that roundabout and I was praying, God. And I heard that voice, are you telling me that I can't change it because of you? And thank God I latched onto it. I said, yes, I believe Jesus, you can do it. No long after it was lifted, I got my promotion. Yeah. And since then, it's, it's been back to back, back Amen. to back. And I'm just so grateful. What can I do to Jesus? I can just say thank you. He has been faithful. And I've told him, this is my bus stop. I have nowhere else to go. I will go all the way by the very special grace of God until I see him in heaven. Amen. I want to thank God this evening for everything that he has done for me. I want to thank God for my three Christian experiences. I want to thank God for adding another year to my life. Um, I don't take it for granted at all. Every year I pop, I mark, I'm just like, God, when the doctor said no, Jesus said yes. And I'm just so, so grateful to God for that. I'm grateful also that the Lord has added another year to my home. God has been with us for 14 years. And I, it's like, wow, it was just like yesterday that I got married. But I'm just like, wow, we're 14 already. I'm just so grateful that God has been there every step of the way. He has blessed us with children, goodly children. Anytime we are in need, anything we need, you know, we just pray and God is always there to, to answer. You know, I want to thank God that it's almost been a year since my dad transitioned, but the Lord has looked after us. We haven't had any need to, to, to want or to complain. God has been taking care of my mom. He's been taking care of my siblings. I'm just so, so grateful. I mean, you know, even this morning, um, I'm just so grateful for the fact that he brought my brother to church. Um, nobody had to cajole him. Nobody had to ask him. He just said, I'm coming to church. And I was like, are you? And this morning before, before I was on the school, he was here. You know, I'm just so, so grateful. I don't take it for granted at all. I'm just grateful. And I'm just praying that this thing that the Lord has started, he'll complete it. Amen. Of the course, uh, it's worse. So I was giving 25% off from the bus and leaving 25%.
and I don't want to initially um, tell my place of work because perhaps if I fail, what is going to happen? <laughs> so I, anyway, to cut the story short, my office also paid the 25%. So the 100% of the cost was paid. And I went through it through the last year to January, this year, this January that we did the, the final exam. And to God be the glory, I passed. Yeah. So, and I want to just challenge every one of us. Professor, maybe you have a project. It may not be an exam. It may not be a certification or whatever. But just trust God that God that you did it for me. Yeah. He, he, he paid for the whole amount of the money that I needed to pay. And he also I passed. So I trust that God in his infinite mercy also will meet you at the point of your need. Yeah. saving me, for sanctifying me. Um, this week, I, uh, maybe two weeks now, I got a letter, one of those Hezekiah letters. And I was, you know, I said, God, you know, the same thing that Hezekiah, you know, did, God of heaven and earth, I'm going to take this to you. Amen. It was one of those routine tests that you do, but I was one of the four out of a hundred people that got that letter, um, that I needed to go back and do extensive tests. And I took it to God. I said, God, you're going to do this one. Amen. You know, I, you really got to show up for me here. Amen. And when I went to the hospital, of course, they tell me four hours. It's going to take about four hours. But I thank God for prayers and for my family praying for me as well. As I went in and they did all their tests, you know, extensive tests. And then the, the doctor said, ah, but I can't find nothing. Yeah. And I thought to myself, of course you can't find nothing because, you know, I've prayed to God. And I don't take it lightly. Honestly, I don't take it lightly. I really give God all glory, honor, and praise. My God is awesome. He's a healer. He's a provider. He's a comforter. I give him all glory. one world that has, that has been going through all through the testimonies, I don't take it lightly. And I don't want to take it lightly either. Amen. What God has done really, because uh, he has added another year to my life. Amen. I mean, when you are young, you can almost take it for granted. But when you are old, every single this thing that God adds, you must really appreciate it. I'm not saying I'm old, though, but, uh, <laughs> but I do appreciate the Lord. I just really want to praise him and Thank him for all that he has been doing. I mean, I've had several challenges here and there, but the Lord has been there. Yeah. Uh, really to sustain me, to help me. I mean, sometimes I wonder how, you know, I just go from day to day with so many things, you know, but God is always there. Yeah. I want to thank him that he's a friend that sticks closer yeah. than a brother, yeah. that I can take all my problems to him Amen. and that he hears. Amen. All my challenges, God is there for me. Yeah. And I thank him also for healing me because many times I have fallen sick, but you know, uh, I don't know. It's just a miracle how he just gets me back on my feet again. All glory to God Amen. for giving me this new year.
soul and so may you. Jesus is my precious Savior. He's my friend and he is true. I have found a great companion. So We're going to be hearing about the friend that we just heard, sung about, and that we've been singing about Amen. all day today, actually. Jesus has a unique instruction for us tonight. And my prayer is that God will stamp this instruction in our hearts. Amen. Because that's what it's going to take for you and I to make the rapture. Amen. We're going to talk about Lot's wife. Jesus gave a warning about Lot's wife. Let's look at Luke chapter 17. Luke 17, and I will read from 26 verse 26 to verse 32. Luke 17. Starting from verse 26, Luke 17. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. We need to, first of all, remind ourselves that Jesus was giving this instruction to the disciples, not to sinners. He was actually talking to his disciples, and he told them, 
towards series of instructions he's been given. And he was actually talking about his second coming, that it's going to be just like the case of Lot and also Noah. So this instruction is for you and I. Amen. So that's why we need to know the context. As Sunday school children and Sunday school scholars, we've all learned so much about Lot's wife. We actually, is one of the personalities we, we're learning. But I just want to kind of pray that it won't, this issue of Lot's wife will not be restricted to Sunday school lessons. It's something we need to be reminding ourselves on a daily basis. We wake up, remember Lot's wife, because the coming of Jesus could be today. There are two raised, uh, points that I want to just concentrate on, on why Jesus gave this instruction for us to remember Lord's wife. There are tons that we, I'm sure we dealt with in our Sunday school. But there are two particular ones that I want us to pay attention to tonight. Number one, Lord's wife left Sodom, but Sodom did not leave Lord's wife. Sodom came with her. You've left the world. Has the world left you? The second point that I want us to look into is that we need to cultivate the attitude to let go. We don't want to wait on the trumpet sound before we let go of the garbage that the world piles on us. Those are the two points we want to del uh, really hone on tonight. Lot's wife left Sodom, right? She had a righteous husband. The Bible said Lot was a righteous man, and he was grieved every day by the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. Every day, it's in the Bible. He was grieved, but we didn't have any passage that talks about whether the sins of Sodom grieved the wife. There's no information about that. You wonder, he, she was watching her husband. Her husband was grieving, but it, was, it looked like she really loved Sodom. <laughs> Sodom was like a heaven. The pleasures of Sodom. Remember also that she was one of the people Abraham was pleading, interceding for. When Abraham was interceding, praying, she was one of the people Abraham was saying, God, don't destroy the righteous with sinners. People were praying for her. She was watching her husband, her husband was there, and I'm sure Lot will probably have been talking about Uncle Abraham and all the miracles that God had pre, you know, performed in Abraham's lives when Lot was living with him. Lot's wife knew about this. Lot's wife was there when those two angels came. When they even performed the miracle of blinding all the men yeah. that wanted to come in. She was there. Yeah. There's no way anyone can convince me. She, she was, you know, she prepared because Lord made a feast for the men, right? <laughs> they baked on leavened bread. She had to be a part of this. But she was going along, coasting along. Even when the angels were saying, grab, telling Lot, who are the people you have here? God had slated this city to be destroyed. Get all of them out. Lot actually went out to go and talk to his son's in-law. His wife had to know about this. But somehow, she was coasting along. Until... The sons-in-law 
said, oh, that's just a joke. You know, that's why I did not say it was a joke. She didn't. She didn't argue with the angels when they grabbed her, right? She came out with them. She did not argue. She could have said, I'm not going. Like the sons in law did. They didn't, they didn't go. They said, no, we are just joking. Lord's wife did not do that. She came out. But as she came out, even though she was coming out, the city was coming with her. Her love, her deep affection for that city was there. Because there's no reason why she clearly heard, don't look back. She heard it. All of them heard it. The four of them that ended up leaving. And that even the angel was saying, we can't do anything until you've all come out. Come out. The mercy of God Amen. surrounded her. Prayers of Abraham surrounded her. The example of her husband surrounded her. Yet, she was coasting her law. And as she came out, you know, circumstances of life are what will show what is in our heart. If she had died in Sodom, they probably would have done songs of service. Get, you know, sent her to heaven gracefully, right? But the fact that the place was going to be destroyed and they came out, that was a circumstance that really showed that all along, even though she didn't fight for, you know, against anything, she was really not there. That was why even after they came out, what? She looked back. Contrary to the very instruction that she knew very clearly. If that circumstance of them moving out never happened, we will probably never have known. So the first question you and I need to ask ourselves will be, it's true, we've said goodbye. When we get saved, we've said goodbye to the world. But has the world said goodbye to us? Do we still have that desire for the world? We can be going through the motion in the church. Yes. We can be in the choir. Yes. We can be in Sundays. We can even be the best, you know, singer. We can be the best in Sunday school. But what is in our heart is going to have, is going to show when circumstances come out. Yes. That's why Jesus was warning his own disciples. Remember Lord's yes. wife. Remember Lord's wife. Particularly because, you see, when the angels came, Lot did not know that they were coming to destroy. <laughs> did he know? That's how the second coming of Jesus will be. It, it's going to be in a tinkling of an eye. Yeah. The Bible says that. He didn't know. He just said, oh, come in. Welcome them. As, as uh, Abraham welcomed the angels, he said, come, rest, sleep, and in the morning you will go your way. That was what he said. And everything was still going on normally. And I'm sure his wife also thought everything will just continue normally. You and I don't know when the trumpet will sound. So what is in your heart? We need to keep checking, asking ourselves on a daily basis. God, check my heart. Amen. Check my heart. Lord's wife was going along with everything. He was probably following the religiosity of her husband. And he was neither in nor out. It's a very dangerous place to be. Because if you are out, everybody will be praying. Everybody knows you are out. Yeah. Right? And they are praying for yourself. But when you are in, but the world is still there. <laughs> We're not going anywhere. That's what Jesus is saying. She's not the only example. Look at the Israelites. They came out of Egypt. But Egypt didn't come out of many of them. Right? 
Can you imagine them saying, oh, we should have been in Egypt where we eat to fullest? Huh? Slaves. They were slaves there. But they love the, just whatever they are getting in Egypt. We want to pray. Everything we've left behind, we don't want to go back to them. Don't turn around to the things you left behind. And we need to pray for a spirit that will not do that. Amen. Sometimes we don't physically turn back, but our spirit has turned back while we are not watching. Jesus loves us. Yes. He doesn't want it. Look at the extent he, he went. You know, Jesus was one of the people who appeared to Abraham. He was the one. He, he was one of the three men. That's what, that's what we call theocracy. You know, I mean, you know, uh, the, the appearance of God in form of Jesus in the Old Testament. It was Jesus that, was, that Abraham was now, you know, bargaining with. It is such, you know, such a Bible. God himself came in form of man to come and say, I'm going to do this. And Abraham started pleading. That's the mercy of God. Amen. Yet, Lord's wife missed it. May you and I never miss it. Amen. We have parents praying for us. Yeah. We have ministers praying for us. We have many loved ones praying for us. Let their prayers avail for Amen. us. The only way we can let these prayers avail for us is by doing our part. Yeah. When we say yes to Jesus, let's burn the bridge. Amen. Amen. No, don't keep that bridge between us and the world. Right. Lord's wife kept that bridge. That desire, that passion for the sins of the world. Sodom was her heaven. This world should not be our heaven. We have a place that Jesus had gone to prepare for us. That's why he gave us this warning. Remember Lord's wife. Look at Gehazi. Gehazi lived with the most powerful prophets in history. He saw miracles. Do you know it was Gehazi that even went to the king of Israel, talking to the king about miracles of that God performed through Elijah, yet he didn't participate in the blessing. So my point is, we have a glorious gospel. Amen. I can say that from experience, because I've been in this gospel Amen. since I was a teenager. That's Amen. 54 years ago. And I can tell you this gospel is real. Amen. It's real. Yes. It doesn't matter whether you are raised in a Christian home or not a Christian home. This gospel, God is God has a stake in it that you and I make heaven. Amen. And God will go through any length Amen. to see to it that you and I make it. Amen. But the question is, do you want to make it also? It's a relationship with God. We have yeah. to have that relationship. God is bound. He will do his part. Yeah. You know, my husband and I, usually when we're talking, my husband will say, each of us, please know this, each of us has to bulldoze our way into hell. Because till we die, God is going to be knocking on our door, on the door of our heart. Yes, he will, yes, uh, to, to hell. Eh? No, to hell. Bulldoze. That is, you're going to be the one that will force yourself to hell. No, it, it, because God is going to be standing in your way. God is going to be saying, no, hell is not for you. I didn't create you for hell. You really have to bulldoze your way there. But why would you do that? Because God has opened the way to heaven. He died on the cross. That's why nobody that makes it to hell will have any excuse. You really have to bulldoze your way there. Yes, but God will not let you do it. Amen. And God will not let me do it. Amen. That's why God is always like this. Look at what he did with the prodigal son. 
He met him more than half the way. Yeah. He was already waiting even yeah. before he came. Yeah. That's what God is doing for you and I. Yeah. Look at that angel. He grabbed them. Go. Even when they are lingering. Go. But <laughs> I was thinking, uh, Lord's wife. Baby, thank God he was behind her husband. <laughs> because it was, the Bible said she turned, she looked back behind her husband. Maybe if she had been in front, you wonder why she was trailing behind. Yeah. Why, was it, why didn't she stay beside her husband? Yeah. You know? Her husband and her daughters were going, but she was trailing because her affection was still in Sodom. Right. May God not let our affection be in the world. Amen. God is going to make sure you don't go to hell. Amen. But you have to collaborate with him. Yeah. Because God is not like the devil that forces. He will only encourage you, just like yeah. Jesus is doing now. Yeah. Remember Lord's wife. Yeah. I'm coming soon. Don't wait on it is too late. That's the second point. The second point is that we need on a daily basis to cultivate the attitude of letting go. You know, Lord's wife waited till it is too late to let go her desires for Sodom. If we wait till the last minute before we start letting go, it will be too late. That's why he said, if you have something in the upper room, don't go back. If you're in the field and you hear that is happening, don't, don't go back. Plus, we know if the trumpet sounds, that's it. <laughs> we will be in the sky before we even know it's happening. So this is the time. Now is the time to let go our unforgiveness. To let go any bitterness. We need to pray for a spirit to let go. Amen. Irrespective of who has offended us. Let go. Say, this is the time. Don't wait till tomorrow. Because tomorrow may not happen. Even if Jesus Christ doesn't come. Every time I go to sleep, I'll say, God, please help me, protect me. My husband and I will always pray. Keep us. If it is your will to come while we are sleeping, yeah. Help us to make it. Help us to hear the trumpet sound. Jesus could come while we are sleeping. We don't have the promise of tomorrow. We only have the promise of now. Even after this service, we go out, we don't know what's there. That's why now is the time to pray for a spirit to let go. Let go the fashions of the world. Let go, let, let's let go all the gunk that the world tries to introduce to us on a daily basis. It's a, it's a walk. It, Christianity is no joke. It's no, it's no joke. It's not for the weak. <laughs> you can't be weak and be a Christian. That's why the kingdom of God suffers violence and the what? And the violent entered it. Yes. It's, it's, not, it's not easy. But we have a God Amen. that has all the power Amen. to give us. Amen. Like today, I mean, when I was coming, you know, I've been teaching for, I've, I've taught for almost 40 years, but anytime I still have to preach, I have butterflies in my stomach. But I say, God, you are the one who is going to do it. Amen. We have a God that is ready to guide us, Amen. to lead us. Amen to protect us. We have every resource that we need. We just need to tap into it. We don't need to be found not ready. I love your son. Be ye therefore ready. We need to be ready. With all the activities that we are doing, let's guard our heart. Our heart. Lot's wife did not guard her heart. That was what happened to her. She didn't guard her heart. Did you ever have any record of anything she said? <laughs> Nothing in the Bible said by Lord's wife. You know? You, we could be in the church. We could look like the you know, most holy. But what is in our heart? 
Because that's what God sees. That's what God is looking at. Our, our ministers can't see our hearts. Our sisters can't see our hearts. But God sees it. And that's why we need to bear open our hearts to God on a regular basis. God, search this heart. Search it. Is there anything I'm not letting go? Take it out. And God will do it. He's done it for so many people. And he can do it for us also. We want to make an abundance entry Amen. into the kingdom of God. Amen. And we can do it. Yes. We can do it because we have a God that has never lost a battle. Amen. He is by your side. He's at this altar tonight. If you're not yet saved, he's ready to save your soul. Amen. If you're saved and not yet sanctified because you need to be holy, without holiness, we can see God. God is here tonight Amen. to sanctify you. Amen. And if you are sanctified, you need power for service. Yes. It's available for you Amen. today. God has all the resources. If you have any sickness that you want God to heal, this is a clinic. Amen. This is God's clinic. Amen. When I get sick, <laughs> I'm not put in the hospitals. I go to God's clinic first. You know? Before I, before I came here, I went for a dental, dental uh, uh, procedure or something. And before I went, the, the dentist was so scared. Oh, you have to be on. I have to give you antibiotic. And you have to, first of all, I said, you know, no, don't worry. I haven't used antibiotic in 54 years. Why would I start now? I said, Jesus' blood is my antibiotic. God help me. And he did the procedure. It was actually serious. That very day, I got home. My face, this side, started swelling. True story. I wish I had taken the picture. <laughs> but I just kept praying, God, you, you've, you've healed me before. You can do it again. Amen. And I touched my cheek. It was hard. There was a, like a lump there. I said, God, you have to touch it. Amen. I started wearing a... Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> what do you call it? The mask. You know, it wasn't that I was sick, but I didn't want people to see. And I thought, God, we are going to London. You have to heal me before I go because I don't want to go with a swollen face. Look, it's gone. Amen. That's the blood of Jesus. God. We have it all here. We have what the world is looking for out there. So let's just come and pray. And tell God to renew our spirit, Amen. to renew our faith, Amen. to renew our love for him, to renew our love for the, for the gospel. Amen. And to cut every bridge that still binds us with the world. Amen. We're going to stand. Amen. Gracious Father, we will. O oh Lord, with your help, we will. Amen. Lord, as you are once again pleading with our soul tonight, we will answer. Amen. We will respond positively. Help us, O oh God, 
Lord, we want to burn all those bridges. And those that haven't crossed it, Lord, tonight, let them cross those bridges, oh God. And as they cross, burn the bridges behind us. Lord, set us free. As many as are looking up to you tonight, oh God, for deliverance from sin, let tonight be their night. Save souls, oh Lord. Deliver from unrighteousness. Sanctify and baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. Heal, oh Lord God. And send us home with joy and rejoicing. Thank you for answered prayers as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.